Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is your Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. And this time we're going to do a double. Five things we learned from both the Fiorentina game on Thursday and the Crystal Palace FA Cup defeat yesterday. And I want to start by just talking about how our success is down to our first team. Not just the first 11, but maybe the first 15 or 16 players who are regularly used this season. That's the first point I want to talk about today. Against Fiorentina on Thursday, we played a kind of half-and-half half team. Uh, Tommy Carroll came in into the midfield and uh, Nasser Chadli played up front as two examples. And yes, we played really well in the first half, I thought. In fact, we made Fiorentina look average in that first half. And maybe if the, uh, if the goal that they scored that was deflected and went in off the stanchion hadn't gone in, then maybe we would have gone on to win that game. I mean, the momentum switched and they played better after that. However, I just want to talk about how in terms of that game and the Palace game yesterday when we played a similar scratch 11, but uh, with the players who hadn't played on Thursday mostly, when you play your kind of mix of your first team and your squad players, you just don't have the same fluidity. You don't have the same tactical awareness. The players don't know exactly where each of them are going to be on the pitch. And so it's almost like regular moves get made, not just from the training ground, but from their experience on the pitch in matches. And when you split up that first team uh, just to kind of rest the legs like we have done the Europa League and the FA Cup, you're never ever going to get the same result. Uh, you might win games, we did win games in the Europa League and we got that far in the FA Cup, but you're never going to dominate games, you're never going to have the same kind of level as you do when you play with your first team. And this season more than ever, I think our success has been down to uh, the defence, uh, uh, you know, a great base, Hugo obviously in goal, and then the centre-backs, Toby and Yang and Kevin Vimmer when he's come in has done really well as well and then Eric Dyer just in front of them and yesterday is a perfect example of how with little changes things just aren't as easy so Eric Dyer pops back into centre back to go alongside Kevin Vimmer uh, Hugo's not in goal and as a result that kind of defensive solidity isn't there and we end up losing the game and let's face it yesterday although we played well and things could have been different if we scored in the first half something I'll get on to at the end of the day, I don't think any of us left thinking Crystal Palace didn't deserve to win that game or didn't deserve their place in the next round. Yes, we probably deserved a draw on the face of the game, but towards the back end of it, we never really looked like getting back into it. So my first point of the five things we learned today is just about how important that first team of ours really is this season. Second point today, and again, it's something that's been discussed a lot, but I want to talk about it. Playing Thursday and Sunday, it really does make for a tired team. Uh, people wonder sometimes, well, why is Thursday, Sunday any different to Wednesday, Saturday or Tuesday, Saturday? Well, you get a day difference. You get, less, you get more time for travel to uh, get taken out of the legs, which I think is really important. I want to use as an example of, of the tiredness that I thought I saw yesterday, the fullbacks. Uh, I was surprised, I have to say, when he picked Danny Rose and Kyle Walker again yesterday because had, they had played against Fiorentina. And I think in the first half yesterday, they did fine. Their crossing wasn't great, but they were making, getting into good positions uh, from their fullback positions down the line, uh, getting to the, to the byline or getting, getting into crossing positions. Their crossing wasn't great. However, what I will say is in the second half, I really felt they dropped off. Their level dropped. And I think that is a result of them playing that Thursday, Sunday. And I think, you know, when it came to it, and I mentioned it a little bit before, the second half, towards the end of the second half, we didn't really look like making it happen. And... I think that Thursday Sunday thing is really really difficult and we're going to if we carry on in the Europa League we're going to have more of that and it's going to be about rotating the squad as much as possible but that links back to my first point as you're never going to really get that fluidity so you've just got to make the best of a bad situation I think my second point in the five things we learned is just how difficult that Thursday Sunday playing really is my third point today again you know quite a clichéd one I hate to say it but Goals change games, they really do. And when it comes to it, let's talk about the Fiorentina game first. Beginning of the second half, we're 1-0 up, we're really cruising, we get a free kick out on the right, whip it in, Hung Min Son nods it home, 2-0 we think, but then the flag goes up. If that goal had counted, I am positive that not only would we have won that game, but I think we'd pretty much be in the next round of the Europa League and we could have rested even more players this coming Thursday. As it stands, the goal wasn't given and then they go up the other end, get a fluky goal, the momentum changes and we come away with a creditable one-all draw. It's great that we've got an away goal. But with this game coming up on Thursday night now, maybe more first team players have to play than would have done had that goal stood or had we nicked another goal in the first half when we were so dominant against Fiorentina. 
Yesterday's game against Palace, another great example. We hit the post twice in the first half. I thought it was three times, but actually the other Deli Alley, uh, the Deli Alley header was cleared off the line by Johan Kabay. If one of those goals had gone in, I am positive that Crystal Palace would have had to break ranks, break the kind of tactical formation they'd been working on all week whilst we'd been playing games and really come at us. And then spaces would have, hap uh, would have come about behind their back four and we would have gone on, I'm sure. If we'd scored early, to win that game and be in the next round of the cup. As it is, it remained a tight game. They nicked one just before half time. We're out of the FA Cup. And, you know, it's not like we didn't make the chances. I think Pochettino said it afterwards in his press conference. We made all the chances. But if you don't nick a goal, you don't get an early goal when you make your chances, then you, you will often be punished. And I think that's what happened to us yesterday. You know, it happens in football. It was one of those days a little bit. But let's try and go score some of those early goals, really set the pace. You know, those times in games where we go 2-3-0 up early, it's happened a few times down the years. The one I can remember is Newcastle at home under Harry Redknapp when Louis Sahar scored two early goals. I think we were 4-0 up after 20 minutes. God, I would just beg for a result like that against Swansea on Sunday. Anyway, so my third point being goals change games. My fourth point today and the five things I feel like we learned from the Fiorentina and Crystal Palace games is more about the Palace game, this one. It's about Michel Vorm. Now, I like Michel Vorm. I think he's an excellent distribu distributor of the football, a great shot stopper, all-round good goalkeeper. However, my fourth point is that he has still always got a mistake in him. And I think that goal against Palace yesterday was Michel Vorm's mistake. Now, hear me out. You know, I'm not a professional by any means, but I played in goal in my time. And your one job in a position like that, your one job is to make sure that ball doesn't go in at the near post. That is your one job. Now, yes, Kelly hit it hard. He hit it well. But Vorm is really trying to anticipate a little bit there about a ball across the box. And by just anticipating that tiny little bit, he's let it go in at his near stick. If he stands up strong, just outside his near post, let it, lets it hit him, deflects it wide, great. Fantastic save. <coughs> However, if Kelly hits it across the goal into the far corner, Michel Vorm cannot be held accountable for that. That's not his fault. That's just a great strike. So his job is to stand up at the near post. And because of that, uh, we lost the game. We're out of the cup. And, you know, it's difficult. I'd say we have got two great goalkeepers at our club. And I'm not sure we could get in a better second choice keeper. And he is very reliable. And he doesn't kick up a fuss about not getting much game time. But like I said, my fourth point is he is still liable to have the odd mistake in him, and that's a shame. My fifth and final point in today's five things we learned, I want to talk a little bit about Josh Onoma. I think there have been some slightly differing views on how he played yesterday. I thought he played well. The key thing for a player of his age that is rare is he's desperate to get on the ball all the time. Uh, he's so brave, he always wants it, he's always trying to make things happen. Now, yes, is he still lightweight, a bit lightweight? Yes, of course he is, he's a growing lad. But also, he's desperate to get on the ball, he gets on the ball, he's a good passer of the ball, good vision. Someone said in one of the fan cams yesterday, they just feel like he needs a goal, and I think that's right. I think the confidence of a goal in the Premier League or one of the cup games for Spurs would really lift him to another level. For me right now, he's still raw. He's too raw to start Premier League games, I think. Possibly too raw to start any cup games at the moment. Maybe bring him on as an impact player when uh, opposition teams are a bit tired. But he certainly, to me, looks like he's got the talent. Certainly got what it takes to become a great Spurs player in years to come. And again, let's just give props to Maurizio Pochettino for blooding Spurs academy players. He could have gone out and spent 20, 30 million pounds in January on a player who probably, you know, let's face it, might not have done as well as Josh Onoma does when he comes on or when he gets his chances. So well done to you, Pochettino, and well done to you, Josh Onoma. That has been the five things that I feel we've learned from the Fiorentina and Crystal Palace games over the last few days. Let me know what you think of those in the comment section below. Let us know what you think you learned from watching those games. games. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. Hello, I'm Rhys James. Welcome back to Spurred On. Now, Sunday is a huge game. We've got Man City away.